Hey everyone, so the wind down is over. Um, excuse me, I'm in my car. I live a lot of my life in my car, so some videos that I do will probably be from inside the car. Um, but anyway, the celebration is over. First test is out of our system. Um, so I just wanted to follow up with you guys and just kind of give you some uh, pointers or things that I've learned um, things that I've done to prepare for this um, and again just things that I've learned um, so one thing I wanted to talk about was studying um, personally I have a hectic schedule um, I go to school full-time and then I go straight to work um, that is my life Monday through Thursday and then on Saturday all day um, so one thing that I find very helpful is just having a little bit of time to study um, and that is whenever I can um, study groups personally I was never really a study group person um, I felt like I didn't learn a lot in study groups um, I felt like they were too distracting for me um, so I do want to talk about that um, but let's just start on study habits so one thing that is completely different from college to nursing school is the test um, the test questions and just the test in general how tests are done when they're done um, I don't know if they're done like this in all schools maybe they are um, so in college per se you have you learn for exam one so X amount of time is blocked out for exam one you learn about it you test about it then you move on nursing school completely different nursing school week one was for exam one that ended then on Monday morning we start focusing on exam two. Exam one was not for two weeks. So you learn about it and you move on and then you test. <laughs> so we have a, a whole two weeks in between learning and testing. So it makes it very difficult to study for it and still be processing this other information that you're giving that you won't be testing on for another two weeks um, so again it's it's a learning balancing act you have to become very flexible in your study habits um, so on to um, studying study groups again I was never one for um, study groups I always felt like I didn't get a lot out of it because I feel like if people know more than you know, they're going to answer the majority of the questions. While you're sitting there thinking you're absorbing these questions, but you're not. You don't benefit from it unless you have a good study group. Um, for example, I went to um, a study group a week, a little over a week ago, um, and tried to study for like an hour or so didn't work it was a big study group everyone was kind of all over the place there was no clear direction as to what to study now not to say they're all like that you can definitely have a study group um, that is very organized that everyone kind of plays a part in that study group that's a good group to be in um, another example I had a study group that same week later on it was three of us and we pinged off of each other for information. So if one person asked the question and the two of us, maybe one of us knew the answer and the other one was kind of unsure, we pinged off of each other and taught each other things that maybe we didn't understand in class. So those type of study groups help where everyone has participation in the study group. Those types are very important. Um, those types you will be successful in if you bring something to the table then again 
you have to bring something to the table. You have to know. You have to study on your own. You have to understand the information before you can get into a study group and just absorb their information and not do good. Um, so then that brings me on to um, just things we learned. Um, we learned a lot. It was one week for one test, um, but we learned a lot. So I did write down some things that I thought might be um, interesting or just help you out. Some little um, memorization type things. Um, so I'll show you a little bit. This is my notebook. You guys can see that. Um, so the first part that I want, first point that I want to talk about is what we call solar. Or excuse me, S bar. Sorry, I think it's solar. Uh, S bar. And these are things. So when you get into the nursing field, and you have a patient, and it's time for your shift to be over, but you want to pass this information on. This is what we call S bar. And S bar strictly stands for situation, background, assessment, and recommendation. Excuse me. So you want to give information about the situation. You want to give background. You want to give your assessment as to what that you what you see or what the patient has told you. So the next person knows what is going on with this patient. And then your recommendation, what you feel like should be done, could be done, and so on. The next one we have is solar. Um, and this is the interaction between you and a patient. This is very important um, because it's going to give the patient a sense that you are listening, that you do care. Um, so SOLAR simply stands for, you have your S, your O, your L, your E, and your R. And it simply stands for sit squarely, if you can read my handwriting, um, open posture basically, um, Excuse me, lean forward. It's a little noisy. I'll wait. Lean forward. You want to have good eye contact and you want to have real you want to be relaxed. Um, you don't want to give any sudden movement. Not any sudden movement. Um, but you don't just want to feel like you don't want to have a tense situation. It's not good for anyone. Um, another thing that we learn is the um, the three principles of nursing. You have your ABCs, ABC. Um, these are things that you want to look for when you have a patient. Um, yeah, basically, things that you wanna look for. Um, so you have your A, which is you wanna look for clear airways. B is your breathing, um, and C is circulation. They're kinda of self-explanatory. These are the, the necessities. These are things that, again, you need to look for when you're assessing a patient. We'll get to assessing in a second. <sighs> a big one on the list, Maslow. Maslow. Maslow is always thought of when you're thinking priority. You're thinking what to do first. What's most important? Um, these are standout words. When you see these words on a test, on a nursing test, Think Maslow, Maslow, Maslow. <laughs> All right, so Maslow basically has a pyramid um, and his pyramid is things that you need in life to succeed, to be successful. Um, so when you think about the pyramid, here's my pyramid. You wanna start at the bottom. The bottom is the most, is the things that you need most. And then as you go up, um, you know, it's more about self. So at the very bottom of your pyramid, you start with um, physiological needs. And I might have spelled that wrong, but whatever. Um, those needs are temperature, food, elimination, um, rest, sexual activity, oxygen, and shelter. These are the things that you need most in life. So again, when you think about the bottom of the pyramid, it's the things that you will need most in life. 
air. You need that to breathe. Um, you need food to live. You, I don't know where they got sex from, but some people need that. I mean, it relieves stress, I guess. So you need um, that. Uh, elimination, you need to get rid of things that you put into your body. Um, and shelter. Now shelter can also fall under the next the next level. Um, so next level while I get into that. Hold on, please. Sorry. Um, so the next level you have is your safety and security. Um, and these are things that you need physically and emotionally. Um, you know, you need a roof over your head. You need to feel secure. You need to feel safe. Um, so that's where all of that falls into that. And it's pretty self-explanatory, safety and security. Um, your next level is love and belonging. Who doesn't want to be loved? Who doesn't want to feel like they belong to something, someone? Um, who doesn't want to have, you know, good relationship and communication is where all of that falls. Then you have your self-esteem, which is the next level or the fourth tier. Um, self-esteem, self-explanatory, how you feel about yourself, um, how you see yourself. Do you feel like you're a 10? Do you feel like you're a 2? It feeds off of you. Um, and then you have self actualization which is how things really are at the end of the day um, but that is the top priority and you know you come to terms with self um, another one that I have is Erickson um, and give me just a moment Sorry, I wasn't really prepared for that one. Um, but Arison has a lot to do, while I'm looking, Arison has a lot to do with, um, think of a good way to say it. It has a lot to do with age related, um, age related factors where you should be in life by a certain age, what you should be feeling at a certain age. Um, so that is what Erickson teaches. And I'm so sorry, I probably should have been a lot more prepared. Uh, bear with me a moment. And I don't offhand know Erickson, which, goes to say that um, he wasn't one of my strongest points so I had this in order and my clinical teacher kind of quizzed us the other day I feel like he moved all of my stuff out of order so I apologize sorry 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 all right so we'll quit on Erickson real quick um, I will find that and I will give that information um, before the end of this. Trust me and believe me, I will. Um, because he is another, found it. He is another strong point of um, understanding people. All right, here we go. So these are my actual notes from class my PowerPoints. All right, so I'll just read you a little bit and then I'll actually show you um, the PowerPoint. So um, Erickson focuses on a lot of uh, psychological development. Um, and again, his are more so grouped by age. Excuse me. And where you should be by that age, what age bracket you fall in and where you're at successfully. Um, so the first age group is between birth and 18 months. And that is your trust versus mistrust. Um, you know, it starts very early on from when you're an infant um, 
and you have that security uh, from a parent and you learn trust or you learn